All right. Well, I appreciate everybody coming out. I know it's the last one of the day. It's a struggle. Everybody wants to go home. Um, and uh, you guys made time for this extremely boring topic, but extremely important topic. So I appreciate that. Um, I got a ton of information to get through. I mean, does everybody hear me? Do I need this mic or? No, you good? Okay. I got a ton of information to get through. Really, uh, I wish they'd give me a three hour session, but I, I don't have that. So um, afterwards, I got cards. If you guys have any questions, um, obviously this is the last one, so there really won't be a happiness bar, but you can email me at any time. And I love, absolutely love helping. That's, that's how I continue to learn and continue to get better. So I'm Joe, I'm Joe Lepresti. We're from St. Pete Design. We're a web development company based out of St. Pete, the Tampa Bay area of Florida. We do um, web accessibility remediation and custom, custom software. The majority of our stuff is, uh, for accessibility, we do a ton of white labeling as well. So I get a, I get a lot of those questions. Um, we auto remediate, we teach how to get and stay compliant, we give accessibility talks, and uh, we build software. Okay, our story, we attended a class in the, well we got a job for accessibility a few years back and we really didn't know anything about it. So we started our research phase and and there really is not a lot out there and what you can find it's like that legalese speak it's all government blue and white not, not for me basically um, but in our in our uh, process of of researching we came across the nfb a national federation of the blind convention it's the biggest convention of the year for blind people worldwide and it happened to be in our backyard in orlando less than an hour drive so we went and checked that out and it was just absolutely mind-blowing it's just amazing um, of the of the accessibility issues that that uh, the low vision individuals have it's it's just it's amazing that's when we decided we needed to make sure all of our sites and software were compliant our little motto was one site at a time we can't fix the whole the whole internet but we can do our part one site at a time and and I speak that for everybody in here that that really should be our mantra one website at a time um, that's how we realized how difficult it was to find any information as a developer and how to be compliant. So we decided to just cobble everything together and help because we just wanted to help. And, you know, I've taken my hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of research and tried to, to uh, put, put it together and give it to you guys. And, if, if there's, and there's a ton of more information that I have and resources besides what I offer here. So what I don't get to, please email me. If I can't answer your question, I will send you the resource for it. I promise you I got it. All right, with all that said, this is Web Accessibility Made Easy for WordPress. This talk outline, I'm going to give you some facts and an explanation of what Section 508 or WCAG is. And then I'm going to offer you our 11 easy steps to be compliant as developers. And at the end of that, I've got some free developer tools and resources that I'll give you guys and we'll go over. <clears throat> All right, start off with a few facts. Over 1 billion people worldwide have some sort of disability. That's a huge, huge number. And of that, an estimated 253 million people worldwide have a, have a vision disability. And that, that's what we t try to focus on because we think that's the biggest hurdle for the internet is the low vision. Um, and of that 253 million, an estimated 19 million children worldwide have, have, uh, uh, are visually impaired. I have two daughters, and watching them with technology, the way they're intertwined these days, it's amazing. And I just can't imagine children not having access to the internet the way we do. It's just so ingrained in our lives. All right, this is a big one here. I've, there were 814 Section 508 lawsuits in 2017. There were over 2,200 lawsuits last year. Now that number is even bigger than what, than what this says because uh, this, is, this is the government. These are lawsuits filed under the federal government. Um, some states differ, so a lot of lawsuits get filed under the state level, so they don't even make it to the government level. And a little fun fact is you would think that all the lawsuits would be from Section 508 noncompliance, but the majority of them are from the, from the Title III. From the ADA, Title III specifies that any user, disabled or not, has to have the same access to whatever it is that the average person does. Think of, um, 
the blue handicapped parking spaces. Think of ramps when you're walking up. Think of bathrooms with handrails. Those are ADA Title III things. Uh, I own a restaurant in St. Petersburg. So when an individual, they have to have access to my bathroom. They have to have access to be able to get the wheelchair up the ramp and in the door. They have to have a table for them. That's just the way it is. And now what it is, is those laws are now transferring over to the internet, which is a big deal. <clears throat> Here's a little graph right here. Um, you can see 2015, we had 57 lawsuits. 2016, 262, 814, over 2200. You can see the exponential growth. And uh, we've already gotten pretty close to this number this year. I haven't checked in the last month or two. So we've probably exceeded the 2200 lawsuits as of uh, year to date. So you can just see this growth. It's going nuts. And, uh, and the most... The states with the most lawsuits are New York and Florida. Of the 2,200, I think New York's got about 15, 1,600. Florida's got about 500, and the other 100 or two are split up between all the other states. So you can see it's a big deal. But I will say this: I just was at WordCamp uh, Orange County a few months ago, and I learned that um, just. Uh, California alone had over 2,000 lawsuits, but again, those lawsuits weren't filed under the federal, they were filed under state, so they're not included in this, in this stat. So um, the, the point is, it's coming. It's here, it's coming, and it's gonna get even bigger. Rightfully so. Okay, this is just a little stat I threw in here. Three dozen lawsuits filed in 12 months by the same person, you, all in Florida. And you can see, if you look up the, uh, the plaintiffs and, and uh, stuff, you can see that I think out of the 2,200 lawsuits, there was under 30, under 30 people that did all the filing. So um, th that's what happens. When things get real stuck, you know, it takes a real hard push in the opposite direction to break loose, and then we can kind of veer back to the center. And I think that's where we're at with accessibility. There's been a complete lack of it. So these guys are pushing real hard to make it happen, and then we'll kind of veer back to the middle. All right, what is Section 508 and WCAG? WCAG 2.1, it's the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. These are basically the worldwide guidelines um, that they put out for accessibility for the entire world. Section 508 is basically the American version and that says that all government agencies and anybody doing business with government agencies, contractors, anything, their website has to be Section 508 compliant. And Section 508 compliance basically just says uh, you gotta be WCAG. Oh, let me back up. WCAG has three different levels. You got A, AA, and AAA. Section 508, it's American version, says that you have to be level A and double A compliant of WCAG. So, I mean, you can be WCAG. If you're fully WCAG compliant, you're Section 508 compliant. If you're fully Section 508 compliant, you're still not WCAG compliant. But in America, we're worried about Section 508. <clears throat> All right, WCAG's four main ideas. Number one is perceivable. This has to do with text. Text alternative, media, adaptable, distinguishable. You gotta make sure that the individual can perceive your content. Operable, keyboard access, accessible, enough time, seizures, navigable. You gotta make sure that, that your site's operable. You gotta see it, you gotta navigate it. Understandable, has to do with re readability, predictable, input assistance. Um, you, you gotta be able to understand it and it's, it's uh, We'll get a little deeper in, in their understanding that has to do with like uh, your semantics and the way your, your site's laid out. Robust, you gotta make sure your software is robust enough to work with lots of accessibility, uh, accessible technology, screen readers and things like that. And don't just think about being accessible or being able to use assistive technology today. Think about two years down the road, four, five, seven years down the road. We all know how technology just, just flips every year. It just keeps getting bigger and better. So make sure you're robust enough to work years down the road because we don't want to come back to our site two years from now and have to redo all this work. The point of this talk is, is really so I can get everybody to include these steps in their process of designing and developing your website. So that way you incur very little extra time, very little extra money, and you just make the site successful from the get-go. All right, why does Section 508 exist? This is why. 
no matter how much time you spend on your site, all the pretty fonts, all the pretty colors, all those sliders and animation, that amazing drop down nav menu, this is what a low vision user sees. Nothing. I don't see nothing. This is why it's important. All right. Now I'm going to give you our 11 easy steps to help with your compliance. This is a good picture for everybody to take if uh, you're interested. I will say this. You can follow every single one of these steps to the T and you're still not compliant. More than likely. I'll be here all day telling you about what you got to do to be compliant. Uh, my point the purpose of this, again, is to give you the things that I think are the most important and the easiest for you to implement that will make the biggest difference without incurring tons of hours that you got to then, uh, you know, charge your client thousands of extra dollars. <clears throat> all right, number one, provide alternative text for all your non-text content. Let me ask, how many people are uh, developers here? Okay agencies or anything? Okay. So pretty much everybody should be familiar with where I'm at here. This is your media library. When you upload a picture, this is what it looks like. You got your, you got your alt text over here, and that's, that's, uh, that's where you want to hit your alternative text. This is an image. This was at the National Federation of the Blind. This is a real thing. I uh, just want to throw that out there. See with your tongue. That's a real thing. That's not made up. That was at the the uh, blind convention and I was just blown away. So, okay, here's a close up of it. <clears throat> Basically in the alt text, you just want to hit, uh, you want to describe the picture, a picture of a device that allows you to see uh, with your tongue. And we got the next one. The cool thing is a little Gutenberg update. There's two ways you can have a picture. Your picture, either all pictures, either need to either have an alternative text or it needs to be labeled as decorative or with like a null tag or something. Um, but Gutenberg allows you when you upload your picture, you can just simply click this uh, and it'll mark it as decorative. And what that does is the screen reader skips right over it because there's no extra information in that picture. All right, we got label form elements. Everybody, uh, I'm sure just about everybody here has got a, some sort of uh, form on their site, some sort of contact us form. This is a contact, contact seven form. <clears throat> and then you gotta, ha you gotta, you gotta label your, your form elements. Now, most, most uh, of these will do that, like contact form seven will do it naturally, but if you go in and add extra form elements, it will not add those, those labels for you. So you're gonna have to manually add those in. And also, uh, Rob, Rob Dawson, Dawson he's, he's, a, he's a real big ex accessibility expert. He actually built a plugin for Contact Form 7 that fixes a lot of accessibility issues. So look for that if you use Contact Form 7. That'll help you out. <clears throat> Again, this is just how you do it. They all pretty much come with it. Again, uh, unless, you're, unless you're adding them yourself. Okay, you want to add manuscript or closed captions to your videos for videos and audio description for animations. An example of closed captions. Basically, this is one of our videos. And uh, how many people here have used YouTube to upload a video? All right. So we all know it's very easy. I mean, this, this, is, this is what we recommend. Not, not for accessibility, but just for the ease of it and accessibility. You upload a video, you get your little, your, your little short code, you put it on your site, you're good to go. But in, in there, when you're editing your video, you can click to add subtitles.